Discovery Channel and ABC News. A Discovery News special report. The top 10 science stories of 1997 with Steve Avison. Welcome to this special edition of Discovery News. In the next hour, we'll look at some of the most important stories and discoveries from 1997. Some of these breakthroughs have already changed our lives. The effects of others may not be felt for some time. These reports came from the far reaches of the galaxy and from all corners of the globe. But perhaps the greatest achievement, and the most controversial, began in a laboratory. The creation of a sheep named Dolly, the first adult mammal to be successfully cloned. George Strait has this remarkable story. When her unprecedented birth was announced in February, Dolly caught almost everyone by surprise, including scientists. People expected that maybe at one time, at some time it would happen, but maybe we've been a little bit quicker than they expected. Dolly is remarkable because she is a clone, the first exact genetic copy of an adult mammal. Scientists had cloned baby frogs, even mice before, but never a full-grown sheep. The trick was helping an adult cell act young again. The key to this experiment was to induce the genetic information of a very specialized cell from an adult, in this case a mammary gland cell, to go back through development to produce an entire new animal. To make Dolly, Dr. Ian Wilmot and his Scottish colleagues began with a six-year-old sheep. They took a single cell from her mammary gland, everything, especially the nucleus, the cell's command center containing all the genes. Then they took an egg from a second sheep, removed its nucleus, and replaced it with the cell from that first sheep. The egg and its new nucleus fused together, turning it into an embryo, but one with all the genetic characteristics of the first sheep and none of the second. In essence, a carbon copy of that six-year-old sheep. Finally, the embryo was placed in a third animal where it developed and Dolly was born. It took almost 300 tries to create her. Perhaps almost we should be surprised, not that things go wrong, but that it works at all, because this is a very hit-and-miss, empirical sort of approach. Other cloning breakthroughs followed. In Oregon, the first cloned monkeys. In Wisconsin, the first cow cloned from embryonic stem cells. And then, from the same laboratory that created Dolly, came Polly, a clone that carries a human gene in every one of her cells, the same gene missing in many hemophiliacs which prevents their blood from clotting. Hemophiliacs don't make the clotting protein, but Polly may, in her milk. You'd extract the protein that you want from the milk, purify it to a very, very high degree, extraordinarily pure product, and then you'd inject it into the patient. Polly is exactly what the Scottish researchers were after, an animal with genes that could be used to help study and potentially fight human disease. The reason why we started this technique um, was not so much to be able to make uh, copies of, of animals, but whilst uh, we are carrying out this procedure, to use it in a slightly different way to introduce precise genetic changes. Genetic changes to create pigs with organs that might one day be transplanted into humans. Designing animal clones for our own medical purposes crosses an ethical line for many people. But it's not nearly as controversial as another potential application of cloning, making exact copies of human beings. Cloning is objectionable to folks because they're afraid of designer families, families made up of copies. Thank you very much. The U.S. Congress that held tense Chairman. hearings to address whether people should one day be cloned. One congressman said they should. Stop. Human cloning will take place, and it'll take place in my lifetime. And I don't fear it at all. But Dolly's creator disagreed. I personally have still not heard a potential use of this technique to produce a new person that I would find ethically acceptable. And I, on that basis, I hope that you're wrong and that we do not see cloning in our lifetime. Scientists say human cloning is years away if it ever happens. Meanwhile, they will keep a close eye on Dolly, watching her grow and making sure cloning has produced a healthy, normal animal. George Strait, ABC News, Roslyn, Scotland. Besides cloning, there were other miracles of life this year sparked by medicine. The most notable, the McCoy babies, the only living septuplets in the world. And as Jackie Judd reports, they're just part of a baby boom created by modern fertility treatments. 
Just two days after bringing their seven babies into the world, 29-year-old Bobby McCoy and her husband Kenny looked forward to the joys of their unusual parenthood. I can't wait until I can hold all of them. <laughs> <laughs> if we have the arms. <laughs> Within six minutes, Bobby McCoy had given birth to four boys and three girls. They became the world's only surviving septuplets. The babies were delivered by cesarean section in the 30th week of pregnancy, about nine weeks premature. This is one of the most blessed events. Extra! Theirs was not the only fertility record this year. In March, a 63-year-old California woman delivered a healthy baby girl. Then, in Atlanta, the first American baby born from a frozen egg rather than a frozen embryo. Both the result of medicine's most advanced fertility treatments. The treatment that Bobby McCoy used has been around for years. She took fertility drugs that release a handful of eggs instead of just one as women normally do. In the McCoy's case, at least seven eggs were released, resulting in the seven babies. God could have given us one, but God is entitled to give us seven. Because of fertility treatments, multiple births have skyrocketed. In the last 20 years, the deliveries of two or more babies have quadrupled, and that can pose special risks for the children. Babies born in multiple sets are more likely to be born prematurely, putting them at higher risk for mental retardation, cerebral palsy, blindness, and delays in speech and motor development. Every organ system is immature. So we are talking about every organ needs to be supported. To minimize those risks, some patients selectively reduce or abort one or more fetuses to protect the ones who remain. Given all these fertility options, some doctors think they need help deciding how far to push science. There are now amazing things that we can do medically, but we have very few guidelines from society on a moral level, an ethical level. Uh, and in my mind, we need that. What we need, researchers say, is a global debate about the unique ethical issues facing scientists and prospective parents when it comes to creating life in a laboratory. Jackie Judd, ABC News, Washington. Coming up, faster, better, cheaper. NASA uses airbags and a miniature rover to explore the surface of Mars and colliding galaxies, exploding stars, and troubleshooting on Mir, the year in the universe. Plus, flesh-eating organisms and diseased coral reefs, the oceans under attack. El Nino ravages coastlines. A Caribbean volcano roars to life. A supercomputer topples a chess grandmaster. And the king of the dinosaurs loses his crown to a 100 million year old newcomer. More.